Hey, it's Azriel Lawless. And once again, you have fallen straight into Ella Vela, found yourself another Lawless interview. And today I'm here with Kendall Vela author, Brandon Greer. Hi, Brandon. Hi, how are you doing today? Doing really well, thank you. And uh, very happy you're on the show today. And um, thank you for being here. I am always excited to meet a new Vela author. But uh, when I have you in the hot seat like this for a lawless interview, the very first question that everyone expects me to ask, ask is, when did you get started writing? Well, with writing, um, I've had an interest with writing ever since grade school. And we had uh, those projects just to, to write a story. So I've always enjoyed writing, though it really hasn't been a big part of my life. Um for my whole life, I think really I got into it a lot more, I'd say about 2004 is when I really discovered a passion. And then 2013 is really when I decided I really want to start trying to make it as a writer now. Oh, okay. Okay. And so have you in fact made it as an indie writer? Um, I don't think I've made it yet. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm I'm enjoying the prospect of what I can do with it. That's awesome. So, uh, so you started writing in, in grade school, you had a passion and then you reawoke that passion, rekindled it back in about 2013. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I guess you were writing your, you've written other Kindle books. Uh, yeah, I did put a couple out on Kindle. Um for ebook that I pulled because I'm just trying to redo things. And a story that I don't think a lot of people hear about is there was one um, Kindle ebook that I put out and pulled it to make some changes and it actually got picked up by a, a publisher. So that was fun. Wow. And which one was that? Uh, the book, that, uh, the <laughs> title that I had it on Kindle was Laura Vane's Gamble. Uh, through the rework, it was republished as the clandestine queen. Really? That's lovely. That's a really, that's a boss name. That's actually good. You probably heard that. <laughs> went, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that is pretty good. Well, I, I came up with the name because um, we wanted to change the focus of the character and I thought, well, let's do something like the Hidden Queen. And we looked into that and there's like, we didn't want to do that. And so let's think of something else. So I just started looking into more words that would, would really fit and fell on clandestine. And we really liked the fit for that. <coughs> yeah. It has a different uh, connotation than hidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it flowed really well with the story. Well, that's pretty cool. So veteran writer yeah. for a few years until ah, ah. when did you hear about Kindle Vela? I heard about Kindle Vela, I think not too long after the launch, but I never really thought too seriously of, a, of it because I didn't look into it much, but I have a friend who is a writer who's been, um, posting on Kindle Vela a lot. And that's where I actually heard of it is through her because she's got a, a long running story on there that she's always promoting and, and pushing out and talking about. So that's the way I heard about it. And I know um, who that is. Can we know? Um, I'm not sure if you know her, the story itself is called the museum and it's written under yes. the name Cherry Stark. Yes. 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 I know her. Well, not, I don't know her Cherry. I don't, I know. I don't mean I know you. <laughs> You know what I mean, Jerry? I know, I'm sorry. I've seen you out here. And that's what I mean. Okay. The museum. Yes. And that's actually doing pretty well, don't you think? Yeah. Um, the storyline is really incredible. I like it. And I've I've had the chance to talk to her a few times about it. We actually used to work together in the same place. So um, I've talked to her how she thinks Vel is going on her end and how it's going on my end. And, and it's nice to be able to have that person that you can... Um, exchange ideas with just in person like oh how are you doing what do you think about this and and just you know shooting ideas here and there okay so you heard of it and then you had some interaction with cherry 
and she let you know how she was doing. So then when did you dive in? Um, let's see. When was it that I actually started? I think it was May or June. Let me look to see. What? So That's it hasn't. Yesterday. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. So let's see. Yeah, in May I started. Hmm. Well, that's cool. Well, um, so you told me that you have. So what's your what's your writing method? You go in and you complete your story before you put it up on Bella. Is that how you work? Yeah, what I did with this one, and and I wanted to use it to see how the uh, the platform worked before getting it to the point where like, okay, I'm actually write a serial and just write something new every two weeks. I had a, a, a novel that I worked on and completed and decided, you know, I'm not sure if I want to go the self-publishing route or the traditional publishing route or what I want to do. And then when I learned about Kindle Vell, I'm like, you know, that's interesting. I think I'm going to try and use this uh, story to get my feet wet in with Kindle Vella and see how it works out for me. And I've already got another book um, that I'm working on, which would, if I did it like traditionally or just indie published, it would be a six book series. Um, but it's a middle grade. And I'm not sure if I've seen too many middle grade on Vela. So I'm kind of There's waiting to see, see what goes on with there. But I think I could do a, a very lengthy Vela with that because it was encompassed about six books in length. So. Well, cool. But um, so uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> we, we haven't even talked about what your Vela is. And I have it down here, the will of the Parthenon. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about the will of the Parthenon. The will of the Parthenon, I think, was a very ambitious idea that I had because it incorporates so many different ideas that I'm so interested in. Um just to kind of to give a brief glimpse into the main points is there's a uh, dystopian um, government. Um, you've got zombies. You had like this apocalypse that went through. You've got superpowers. You've got ghosts. It's a really interesting mashup. And so saying that, then I'll just kind of walk you through the, the premise of the story. Uh, seven years in the past, there was this huge world war where this this guy named Pablo Cortez wanted to take over the world and he was succeeding and there were only a couple countries that were uh, standing up against him and the United States was one of them and they decided that they weren't going to win without taking drastic measures so they started a super soldier program and based off things happened there they introduced the zombie virus into the world and the world's yeah. been destroyed because those super soldier programs are always so successful. Yes, they are. But it ended the war in this case. So it was successful, just turned everyone into zombies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so seven years later, you've got this girl named Tina Porter, and she's one of the few survivors. And she's holed herself up in Columbus, Ohio. And because she knows she can survive there, she doesn't want to leave. But one day she's almost killed. And this guy rescues rescues her and says, okay, you can come with me and I'll take you out of the city to a life that's a lot better than this. Okay. So as she leaves, um, they get chased by these people who want to kill them because, you know, all good books have people who want to kill you. And she starts finding out that things aren't, things in the world aren't really working how they used to. For one thing, this guy that she's with can teleport. And it's oh. really weird. She doesn't know how she feels about that. But they get back to this, <laughs> their survivor compound called the Parthenon. And they tell her it's been fashioned over Athena, the Greek goddess. And she thinks, okay, very interesting that you, you did that. But come to find out that Athena is actually leading them. And what's happened is she's called a benefactor. And these benefactors are people through history who have had such a big impact on influence and where history went that their spirit is still linked to the world. Okay. And so they still want to direct human um, evolution. I see. As, as it would be. So they, they still want to be in place, but with how loud uh, electronically the world has gotten before the war, they were silenced. They didn't have any more influence. 
Um, but once all of that fell, they came back and now they're trying to direct humans in the ways that they need to go again. And by doing that, or in a way to do that, they grant their champions powers uh, to fight for them. Oh. And so in this story, you've got two benefactors who are enemies and it's Athena who in this story, you find out um, the, the spirit is just the person that Athena was based on um, that, that Homer wrote about, you know, you know, fiction, I can say whatever I want. Um, so, but her enemy is Alexander the great. Okay. And so those two factions in this story are, are fighting it out. And, um, Athena needs Tina to help her with something very important. And so that's kind of the flow of the story. Okay. And um, that's about what Tina's going to do if she's going to help and and how she decides to continue living her life. So it's a modern Parthenon, Alt-Earth, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> after all of the technology has silenced the Greek gods come back. Well, not just Greek gods, um, just influential people. Um, I mentioned a few people, a few of those in the book, like Steve Jobs actually became one, and Leonardo da Vinci is one, and oh, wow. Pocahontas. So there's a lot of buildup that I could really take okay. in a lot of different ways for series for this. Right, right, right. Very nice. Okay, I didn't realize it was like Bill and Ted. Yeah. <laughs> you know uh so yeah okay so now we can go get any influential person and yes that's very good okay so that is the will of the parthenon and how many Mm -hmm. episodes do you have right now let me see i believe it ended at 40 okay it is a complete series how many words did you wind up with do you have do you know did you keep track um this one ended somewhere between 90 to 100 thousand words nice and are you planning to take it to book um at some point yes i will that's that was one of my goals to to put it up on bella see how it did um and then yeah i do want to have a book out for this one Oh, very good. Very good. So, okay. And uh, since you're a one at a time serial guy, what is next on your drawing board? Anything? Uh, For Vela, um, the next thing that I'm working on is, yeah, that middle grade story that I've written. I've written about two of the, the books for that I would just start into. And then it's a six book series about this kid who gets pulled into another world. Ah. Um, and by him getting pulled into the world, it released an evil wizard who now wants to take over and he has to learn what to do to stop him. Um, he's about a 13 year old kid and he's going from a post-apocalyptic world on a planet that's dying Mm-hmm. to a medieval world that is just lush and full of life and completely wow. opposite of what he's come from. Nice. Good contrast. That's awesome. So uh, do you have a working name? Um, right now, the working title that I've been using is Jackson and the Forbidden Cave. Cool. I like that. So, um, are you, uh, you sound like a planner to me, sir. Are you? Uh, I am very much a planner. Um, when I first started, I was definitely a pantster, but after a NaNoWriMo or two, I decided I, um, I have to plan out everything meticulously. And then while I'm writing, I can still do a little pantsing and, and discovery writing, but I like to have my plan down. Yeah. What did you, what do you mean you found that out during nano? Did, were you unsuccessful? No, I wasn't unsuccessful with nano, but as I was reading back on some of my edits, I'm like, I have left out entire chapters of this book that I never even wrote because I'm like, I don't know where I want it to go from here. So I'm going to start on another part completely. And then I just never go back. I'm like, Oh, I'm done. And then I read through it. I'm like, I'm not even close to done yet. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and what does your process look like? What's that planning process look like? Oh, it's a fun process. That's where all of my um, discovery comes from. I 
I'll kind of give you an example about uh, the process that I go through on a, a book that I've outlined and I'm planning on writing soon. Um, my my wife and I were driving through Yellowstone and a lot of my book ideas just comes from questions I have and then just thinking about them. And so as we were driving through the park, I just thought there's got to be some cool story behind it. And my main question is, what if uh, Yellowstone itself isn't a super volcano? What if there's something else causing it? So I just start with that idea and I'm like, okay, what if Yellowstone, instead of a volcano, there's a trapped fire Titan. And, you know, I just, I get these little ideas and then I just <laughs> start, nice. I start building on it. And as we were um, driving, my wife fell asleep, which was good for me because I could just brainstorm the entire way, just building on these little questions. And it was so much fun just to, to sit there and think as I was driving. And by the time we got back to our hotel that night, I had gone through enough of these thoughts and questions that I wrote a 5,000 word draft outline for the book. Mm. And then, so once I get to that point and I'm like, okay, I've got five to 10 pages of just ideas now. Then I just start putting them together. I'm like, okay, let's make this a little bit more cohesive. Let's start naming some characters. Let's do this. Let's take this to about a 10 to 15,000 word outline now. Ooh. Then I, as I get all of those ideas and the stories coming together, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a new outline, but I'm going to break it out into chapters now. In this chapter, this happens, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then by the time I'm done with outlining like that, over a month or two has gone by and just my my brainstorming and my thought process and my outlining. So by the time that I actually sit down to write, I've got an idea of exactly where I want everything to go. Well, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. That's pretty neat. Just start out with a small outline and then get in there and expand that out. Yeah. Yeah. I think cool. they, I think they call it like the snowflake outlining. Oh, where you just yeah cool. start with something small and it's just like, for me, it's on steroids. Cause I just, go crazy with it well, that's cool all right so we can expect to see more from you that's great so in the process of getting ready to write your vela and in the process of writing your vela oh wait before i do that let's talk about social media how you doing out there <sighs> i hate social media <laughs> uh -huh. oh it's so time consuming i am i've just recently started um with TikTok and, and I'm really trying to push uh, reads that way through Vela and for some of my other books. And I think I get more lost in just scrolling through other people's stuff than doing my own. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I am in a lot of social media where I, I really try and I work hard to, to put out content, but I'm like, people are probably getting sick of my content. So I need to give it a break, but then I'm like, well, now I got to get back to it. And it's just, you know, I haven't learned the perfect formula for social media marketing. It's rough. It's rough because it's a big part of indie life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I was just curious about that before yeah. we went on to ask, you got any uh, Kindle Vellas that you've read that you would care to shout out and share with the audience? Well, the ones that I like to read are kind of, you know, similar to what I like to, um, to write. Right. Um, the one that stuck out to me in the beginning that I started and I've really enjoyed so far, I haven't finished it yet, but is bug by, oh, Kelly, by Kelly. Yeah. Um, I really like the dystopian paranormal type stuff and it really just drives me. Um, it gives me a lot of ideas. Um, you know, I've started with the mountain by Trish, um, Lobaker. I and I'm, and it's only there are only fifteen chapters so far, but I'm in, intrigued by that story. Trish, um, Trish Lawbaker, L A U B A C K E R. Neat. Okay. So yeah, that one has been one that's um, there's been an interesting read so far. It's been intriguing. Mm-hmm. Um. Let me see. What was another one? I've I've been have been working on some of the museum by Cherry. Um, so, yeah, that one. And I've talked to her is like your stuff really reminds me of Warehouse 13. And I don't know if you've ever watched that show, but yes. yeah, those, 
those are the kind of things that I really like to get into is those things that have maybe a little paranormal. I like the dystopian. Um, I love things that come with some kind of superpower. Um, but yeah, and the museum, definitely the artifacts and things. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so I've got Bug by Callie Chase, The Mountain by Trish Laubach, and uh, The Mansion by Cherry Stark. Yeah, the museum. Sorry, the museum. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Well, what I was thinking. Okay, <laughs> so we'll get those. Those usually, those get linked uh, after your links uh, in the uh, description of the video. And I also mentioned them on Facebook. Do you have a Facebook page? I do. Um, it's probably where I'm most active. Well, okay. all right. Um, not very active, but most active. <laughs> are you a member of Hella Vela? Uh, not yet, but I have been looking at it. Yes, I think you should become a member. I will um, definitely do that. <laughs> well, we have this channel out here on YouTube and we have the Facebook group and that is a a heavily curated Facebook group. I don't do that by myself by any means. I started it and named it and immediately got a more talented person to help monitor it. So um, <laughs> it's got two admins and several mods. So it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a growing group. I really like the community. And, and of course, I, I belong to a ton of, of Facebook groups in Bella. They're all they all have their own value as far as networking goes, I think. Yeah, I, I think I've only um, really tried to sink my teeth into two groups right now mm -hmm. um, that way, but I'm trying to do maybe a little bit more in, via Instagram and TikTok as well. Right. Um, right. I think for, for me, trying to pull myself in too many directions just stops me doing from what I know I need to do. Yes. I understand that completely. I think everybody out here understands that and understands the misery of being pulled in so many directions <laughs> and uh, spending more time angsting over writing than you're actually writing because you're doing more, you know, social media stuff, mm -hmm. more networking stuff. So with, you know, I'm very familiar <laughs> with the, with the problem. Yeah, <laughs> we, have. we have a problem. <laughs> uh, so the next question I want to ask you is if in the course of things you woke up tomorrow, found yourself suddenly in charge of Kindle Villa, you had a complete carte blanche and you just go right ahead there. <laughs> oh, if what would I, you improve it? If I was in charge of Kindle Villa, I think my first thing that I would change is having readers being able to find things easier and have the promotion itself through Amazon be better. Right. The one thing that, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of people say, and it's been a little frustrating in it is if you want to succeed on Kindle Vela, you really need to bring your own audience into it. And I want to take that, out of it so if you are a new time writer and you don't have an audience you don't get so frustrated because you know what there's more work being done on the amazon side to promote these new stories i think um i think that would be one of the big things that i would change right off the bat is uh, getting more eyes on stories so you're not having to feel like i have to bring my own readers i mean bringing your own readers is always going to be an issue you're always going to have to, but um, a little bit more assistance, I think, on the um, Amazon side, getting the word out. So do you use, do you utilize the advertising available to you on your uh, eBooks? I have used it for the eBooks, but yeah, I don't think they've got that available for Kindavella yet. No, they don't. No, no. I was simply asking if you yeah. had had experience with it for the eBooks. And yeah. And you find it good? Is it good for what you spend? Um, right now, I think I've done one or two paid promotions. Um, and honestly, for what I've done, and I need to research a lot more, I find I get more exposure by doing the the free books for like, what, five, six days. And then I just, I get a whole lot of downloads and then more reviews that way. I think, I think if I'm spending the money 
to advertise and put put my book other places, I don't yet know well enough how to target it. So I I've been seeing better results from just like the the free book giveaways. So when do you decide <clears throat> that you're going to do a free book giveaway? Do you just sort of decide it and can you just click a button and do a free book? Uh, I think it, you can do it once every 90 days, I believe. And then you set up for as long as you want, no more than a week. Uh, but yeah, after, if you haven't done it in 90 days, you can just go in at any time and do it. Um, and yeah, I haven't released like sequels to books yet, but I hear one of the really good times is when you're releasing a sequel to, Hey, I'm giving away the first book for free now. Right. So right. Go get that for free and then go buy my second one. So, um, the that's way I've right been also. doing it, there hasn't been too much rhyme or reason. I'm like, I've, I've hit a lull. Let's just give it for free for a while. And then 90 days later, we'll look at it again. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So anything else besides better exposure for the writers and the stories? Um, I think that's my main, my main thing right now. I think once I put more effort into putting a lot more out and being more constant on Kindle Vela. Um, I'll learn more things in that way. Um, I see a lot of people have a lot of books out. And um, I think once I'm doing that and spend more time, I think it'll be more clear to me like, oh, we need to change this or change this. But yeah, just being able to to get these advertised better to uh, to readers would be definitely a big thing for me. I think so too. I think, and I think it's coming. I do, I do. But uh, they're a big company, and I don't know if you have any experience in corporate America, but it is like <laughs> watching a glacier move <laughs> back when they weren't moving like they are now. Yeah. You know, back when you could yeah. actually stand and look at it and it didn't change in front of you. Yeah, if um, we could get corporations moving as fast as glaciers now, yes, we'd, we'd, be, <laughs> we'd be there. <laughs> Then we'd be a okay. Yeah. I can't even use that phrase anymore. <laughs> glacial speed, because you know it's going yeah. a little faster than what I think. That is. <laughs> so anyway, um, well, I think we have come about to the end of this lawless interview. I, I warned you; it was very simple, dead yeah. simple. <laughs> Uh, and you know that in the video description at the bottom here, I'm going to be putting links to your Vela work as well as a link to your uh, Amazon author page so that people can get to your other works as well. Because um, I wouldn't want anybody to miss out if they like your Vela. I would like them to see your other stuff. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to someone who's freshly getting to know you by just listening to this video? And believe me, we have people wander onto these videos and click these books. Um, what would you like to say to him? Um, what about Kindle Vela or just anything at all? You, what would you like to say oh, to bam, bam, your, your audience <laughs> about, hey, you know, they're clicking on this book and they're going to read your stuff. Would you like to speak to them before they uh, crack it open? Um, yeah, I think what I would want to say to any potential reader who comes to my page and and reads through my stuff is there is definitely more to come. Um, I I hate reading a book that I love and then finding out that that's it and there's nothing else coming. But I have in the works right now, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six to seven more books that are actually planned. Um, wow. se sequels to what I've got, new projects. Um, so there's going to be a lot more for me in the coming future. So Well, that's wonderful. And I'm glad of that. I've, there were so many creative people out there and Bella has spurred a lot of people's creativity that was pretty stymied before. So mm -hmm. I'm excited uh, because we're just one year in. We're just one one little year in. Yeah, we, We've got to give it some more time and see uh, oh. what she what she blooms into, right? Yep. Oh, All yeah. right. Well, I'm going to oh, say goodbye oh, now. I've got my dog yelling at me. She wants her kibble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thank you again for being on the show. All right. Thank you for having me. It's been a good time. Peace, everybody.